Hi, welcome to another episode of Harrison Hobbies. Today, the power is out, and so I figured I would get a little bit of the backup system going, get some lights in here, and make a video. So today, I wanted to talk about mining. With COVID going on and a lot of uncertainty in the banking, I've noticed that uh, all of the major cryptos are starting to go back up in value. For about a year there, they were all pretty close to trash. So, I, a while back, got a mining GPU. So, I got two Zotacs here. Both of these are GTX 1060 3 gigs. Uh, this one here is a standard consumer edition with your IO ports on the back. This one, though, has uh, it's a little bit downclocked compared to the consumer version, uh, but this one's specifically made for mining. I figured we can do a quick tutorial on how to mine. So uh, we'll go through the process of showing a dual GPU configuration. So uh, again, another disadvantage of this card is whenever you put a mining card in, uh, it causes a lot of conflict with the onboard drivers. So what you'll end up having to do is run a secondary GPU as your head unit. Uh, and if I had more headroom on the power supply, it could have been two of these, again, depending on case size. Or sometimes it's easier to use uh, a small single slot card. This one happens to be a Quadro K620. We'll do a quick walkthrough of what's in that machine, and then we will walk through the steps of the software. So at a high level, the first thing that we'll do is we'll choose the crypto that we want to mine. So we'll use something like a website like what to mine and then we will put in what cards we have, figure out what algorithms hash the best on a certain piece of hardware, and then what coins have that. And then we will find a mining pool that has the coins that we want. One of the advantages of Mining Pool Hub is that it does coin swap. And so you can mine one type of coin uh, that's maybe the most efficient for your system, and then you can have it swapped to anything else on their website uh, and then it'll automatically do the exchange for you. We'll download a wallet, we'll set up the account, and then we'll download a piece of software called Awesome Miner that's a big aggregate for a lot of mining software, uh, as well as one-click ability, so it makes it a lot more simplified. So for this setup here, what we'll do is we're going to take our driver card here, our K620, and we're going to put this into the PCI slot here. So all we have to do is just put it in, push down, it clicks, and we're good. Uh, and then the next piece we're going to do is use our riser card. Uh, so for this, we're going to take the USB, and keep in mind, this isn't a real USB cable, um, but we'll take this, put this into the third slot here, uh, only to give a little bit more clearance, and then we will plug this in. And then on the other side here, we will give it some power. And so this is going to be going off of our SATA rail. So we will plug this in right there, and then uh, we will take our mining card, we'll plug this in as well. Uh, and then the last step is going to be to take our other cable here, there we go, put that in. So now for our test bench here, we're set up. We will go into my, uh, whattomine.com. And so now this is kind of a repository here where you can put in uh, your GPUs and your uh, ASICs that you have. And then based on what you have, uh, it'll spit out what the most profitable coin is going to be to mine. Uh, so in here, right now in this system, we're going to disable the our driver graphics card, so the Quadro, and we're only going to use the mining card, and this is, for all intents and purposes here, a 1060. We've entered the 1060 that we have. If we had two, we'd make that two. Simple detail. Uh, and then we're going to scroll down and we're going to hit calculate. And so we're going to look down here and we're going to see that nice hash is going to be our most profitable, and then we have swap, and then we have Ravencoin. So Ravencoin right now is probably going to be our best bet because uh, if we go back to the mining pool hub here, and we look through our coins, we can see that we have Ravencoin down here. And so now there are multiple algorithms of Ravencoin also. And so some of these are going to be, I think they're going to be dominated by the ASICs. Uh, the ASIC is effectively, it's an application specific integrated circuit. It's just, it's a circuit board that is really good for one thing. Uh, and so because it's so efficient versus the jack of all trades, like a GPU, uh, GPU mining on um, something that has ASICs available is never going to be profitable. 
So what you have to do is find algorithms that are catered more toward GPU or in some cases CPU. But for right now, we'll just use Ravencoin with the Kapow uh, algorithm. So we're in Firefox. We're going to go to, let's go to Mining Pool Hub. So this is going to be our first step here. Now, uh, let's sign up, and then we'll create a brand new account. We'll call this sh underscore hobbies, password. Now that we're in Mining Pool Hub, we'll go first to check out Ravencoin. So, uh, some things to note here is, first off, here is going to be the URL that we put in whenever we enter this information into our mining program. And the next thing is whenever we start actually producing coins, uh, whenever we want to auto-swap. And I personally hold Digibyte. You can hold whatever you think may be either the best at holding value or has the most future. But to do that, we'll go into auto-exchange. And then we'll set auto-exchange to, and we'll choose whatever currency we want. Uh, in this case, it would be Digibyte Skine. And then we can look here at the exchanges. We, by default, have everything on here as on. So the next thing that we'll do while we wait for that is we're going to go on to Awesome Miner. And so we will download this. So this is just a one-click host. Uh, there's a free version and a paid version. Um, for the free version, your hashing power is going to be skimmed by this. Uh, so you're going to lose some money from using this versus uh, any of the specific programs that run the stuff. But let's hit, let's hit download here, and then we just download the Awesome Miner installer right here. So we'll save that, and then we'll install it, uh, and then Windows may pop up with the security thing, just accept it, and uh, and then get it going. So uh, to use Mining Pool Hub, we're going to hit New Miner. And so the free version will give you two instances of a miner. It could be two alternate ones that both use GPU. Uh, you can have, if you had multiple GPUs that can run this, you can have one GPU run one and one the other, or you can also assign them to both, or one could be for an ASIC. Uh, if you have an ASIC attached to your computer. And then lastly, it could be for your CPU mining. Uh, or in some cases, they also have hard drive mining where you just basically become a data warehouse. Uh, that, again, will not be in scope for this. So we'll go in and we'll add a new miner. So we're going to do a managed miner. And then we'll call it GPU mining. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to look at is our algorithm. And so in this case here, we're looking for Kapow. So now the next step is we have got uh, our tools here. We're going to go to our Ravencoin. We will take our US server and we will simply copy. We will go into Awesome Miner. We're going to see our uh, kapow. There we go. Take our kapow uh, and then we're going to choose. So a quick decoding here. If it's a green N, that means that this algorithm or this mining software is going to be applicable to NVIDIA. So the square here is going to be our CPU and then the little chip icon is going to be a an ASIC. So and then the red is going to be for uh, AMD. Some of these are going to be applicable to both AMD and NVIDIA. So another thing to note is that depending on what software you have, um, runtime scripts and everything, some of these may not work right out of the box on your computer. Uh, and so you can go through the process of troubleshooting. Basically, all of these are just different people's software that they've created to, to mine to do the hashing for you. Uh, every one of them is going to have a dev fee. Uh, and so basically, of your hashing power, you're going to contribute one or two or sometimes up to like 5% of your hashing power to that dev, and so they're going to be funneling off a little bit. So you're actually going to hit get double hit. So the first is Awesome Miner is going to skim a little off the top for themselves. I think it's one or two percent, and then your algorithm, uh, your software is also going to skim a little. So expect to be losing about five percent of your total hash power, 
which again you should be more than making up for because right now it is profitable. So we'll start out with N B minor. Uh, any of these, again, they're just different devs, and so we'll try it. Uh, it may give us an error whenever we try to run it, and so if it fails, then we'll just we'll go down the list. Uh, so we'll actually start out with B minor, and then our pool here, it's all automatically selected Ravencoin. We'll hit next. Oh. Uh, okay, so we have Kapow, and then we will type, we will select new pool. So this is pulling information from my previous one. So we'll call this Ravencoin example. Our pool connection URL is going to be that. So our worker name was whenever we were creating our account in the mining software, uh, we will create it, uh, I think it was sh underscore hobbies, and then we do a dot, and then we do one. So in some mining pools, uh, you actually have to go in and create worker accounts, and so in that case you'd have to do sh underscore hobbies Point 0.1 and then point 0.2, point 0.3, however many you have, uh, and then your password would be whatever password you assign to that. Mining Pool Hub will automatically create them whenever it sees a contribution to the pool from your account name, uh, and then you just need to give every computer that you have running a, a serial number. So in this case, this is computer one, mining one. Uh, if I had another computer, it would be dot two or dot 20 or whatever. Uh, it just needs to be numeric and then our worker password doesn't matter, just for consistency, we'll make it the same as the worker name, uh, the worker name serial number. Our coin, just for accounting purposes, we'll type in Ravencoin, and then we'll do Kapow, and then we don't need to worry about wallet address, personalized string, or notes. So, we'll hit OK. So now we are good with our Ravencoin example, we'll hit Next, and then we'll assign all of our miners, and we'll finish. So now we have GPU mining, Ravencoin example. That's all it took. So now there's one last step here. So Ravencoin on here requires, this Kapow requires three gigs of, uh, of RAM. This has it, our Quadro 620 does not. It only has two gigs. Uh, so you're probably going to be running the same issue with like a GT 1030 um, and a GTX 1050. The 1050 Ti and anything above that for 10 series and I believe the 15 series and 2000 series, nothing has less than three gigs. Uh, so you should be fine with all that. Double check what I'm saying here. Now the next step is going into properties and then you're going to hit configure under GPU and you're going to select uh, only GPU one because in this case, this is our GTX 1060 mining card. We'll hit okay and then we'll hit apply and then now we'll hit start and this should run through and get our mining going. Now, as I showed before, we accidentally put in uh, Claymore's Ethereum miner, so uh, it's going to fail here because this isn't Ethereum, this is Kapow. So what we'll do is we'll hit stop, and then we'll go in, we'll reconfigure that miner, and we're going to select not Claymore's Ethereum miner from the drop-down list, but we will select one of the applicable algorithms or the applicable miners to our Kapow algorithm, in this case, B miner. Now we'll hit run, and one thing while this is booting up to note is the software will automatically try to run a miner three times, and so if it encounters any errors while trying to open, it'll automatically close, reopen, and then do that three times, and then it goes back to defaulting. But here we can see that it's starting to connect to the server, and it's making an attempt, and then we can see here that we are actually starting to run. So now we're here on digibyte.io, uh, and so we'll click on downloads, and we'll look here, and then uh, I would recommend the Digibyte core. And so that will install the wallet and a node on your computer, and so it needs to keep itself updated. Um, and so if we just click Windows here, we don't need to install a full node or Mac if you're running it from Mac. Um, and then there are lots of other software wallets and hardware wallets. Uh, that are applicable here. Try a couple of different wallets, see what one works for you, whether you want to have um, a paper wallet, uh, if you want to go with hardware wallet, like a ledger, 
So Digibyte is one of the original coins, uh, but unfortunately never just really, it never took off like a Litecoin or Ethereum or, or Bitcoin. Uh, and so they've got a lot of the infrastructure set up that time gives you, um, but they're really not hugely adopted. Um, so me personally, I would download the Digibyte Core Wallet. Uh, I wouldn't worry about running a full node if you're just starting here. So you're going to connect, you'll run your startup, and then uh, you can create a backup for your wallet. The one thing you need to remember though is there's a file called wallet.dat. So that is the piece of your wallet that holds all your coins. So we'll open up Digibyte Core. Usually it takes about four or five minutes to open uh, pretty much every time to load wallet. And then we'll go through the rewinding. So it starts out at block number zero. So that was the first coin that was mined. Uh, and all coins have Satoshis. Uh, and so I think that's one times 10 to the negative 12th. So that's 0 0.00000000000 or 01 um, units. And so every cryptocurrency that I'm aware of uses that same. So you don't have to trade in one digibyte. Like stock markets where if you want to buy one Amazon stock, you got to pitch over $2,400. You need to buy one Bitcoin, you can buy one Satoshi of Bitcoin, which is a fraction of a penny. Uh, and so you just keep moving it up as you want to buy. Uh, and so that's one of the benefits of crypto is that you don't need to buy whole chunks. Uh, and so whenever you mine, you're going to be mining fractions. So once you're in your account here, uh, it, you can check out your workers. And then you'll see here that we would have uh, the one that we're creating right now who is active. And then we can go to our dashboard here and then we'll see how much coin we're getting. Uh, with Ravencoin because we're in the Ravencoin profile right now. And uh, it looks like we've gotten 1.4 today. Uh, so then we'll be on our mining pool here. We will go into our wallet. We will create a new payment address in the wallet. We'll paste that payment address here. We'll set an automatic payment threshold. Uh, and keep in mind that every time that you do a transaction, they take away uh, a fraction to give to the miners that are processing that and adding that to the blockchain or the ledger. Um, so try to keep that number at reasonably high. I would try to stay away from like a five uh, and go 25, maybe even higher. Uh, and then it'll automatically go in anytime. You can also manually cash out at any time you want. Overall, this was a quick intro into getting mining uh, with both Ravencoin and Digibyte, though those could have been any coins for this example, uh, and a quick walkthrough of some of the tools that we need to make that happen. Thank you for watching, and check back for more videos soon.